Hello folks, my name is Marco Landry and today I'll be documenting the process of replacing the spark plugs on my Yamaha R3. So if that's something you want to see, stay right there and we'll get started right now. All right, folks, welcome back. So as I mentioned in the intro, the plan today is to replace the spark plugs on my Yamaha R3. So I've had the bike now for about a year and uh, it's due for uh, a spark plug replacement. So I'm gonna be installing the, uh, the NGK CR8EIX. So uh, normally the OEM plugs are the CR8E, the IX simply means that they are the uh, iridium version. So iridium is a precious metal that will um, have better conducting capacities and higher tolerance to eat. So this is the only reason why I'm using these. I'm not sure if that's gonna make a big difference or not, but that's what I'm gonna be installing today. So you have the option to install the standard uh, CR8E if you want, but if you want iridium, uh, that's the model number that you need. In terms of tools, uh, you don't need a lot of tools, but you will definitely need uh, something to measure the gap between the center electrode and the side electrode on the spark plug. So in order to do this, uh, there's a few tools available. You have the, uh, the coin style gapper, or you have these here. I'm not even sure what, uh, what they're called, but that's a different model of gapping tool. And you can also use the regular feeler gauges like this here. So you have different thickness that you can use to measure uh, the space between the two electrodes. And with this one as well, you also have the same type of, uh, of wires as you do on this one. But the critical thing in all of this that if you have one of these coin style gapper, I would say this is good to measure the gap, not necessarily to adjust the height between your center electrode and your side electrode, because quite often you end up damaging the tip of the electrode when you use this. So what you want to use is something like this here. And this one, you can see the two different little grooves on both sides here, allows you to simply connect or hook into uh, the electrode and then you can adjust the height of or the distance between your top electrode and the uh, the center electrode yours okay so i know this is a really long explanation but gapping your spark plug properly is critical in that process so you definitely don't want to damage that tip and uh, you want to make sure that you have the proper gap between the center electrode and the side electrode so in my case for uh, the R3, the recommended gap is between 0.7 and 0.8 millimeters, or in inches is gonna be 0.028 to 0.031 inches. Okay, so when you want to measure the gap, what you do basically is you take your old gauge and you determine what distance you want between the center and the side electrodes. So in my case, I want the point 030 and I'm gonna just take that little hook here and see if that little hook fits between the side and the center electrode and if not you can take these little grooves here and simply insert it inside or around your uh, your electrode and just tilt it up or down depending on uh, on what you need to do in terms of adjustment. So you can go uh, like this to bend it down or you can go like this to bend it up and increase the distance between uh, the electrode. If you want to measure with a fielder gauge, in this case, I got the point, uh, point zero one nine and point zero one one. You can combine them together, press them together and see if the that thickness will fit between the two electrodes. In this case, it's not fitting, so I'll need to stretch a little bit more. So 
So I'm going to take this little tool here again and I'm going to try to increase the distance between the two electrodes. So simply going to insert it like this here without touching the center electrode. I'm just going to bend up just a little bit here. I barely touched it. And now my fielder gauge fits in between uh, the two electrodes. So this is for spark plug one. I'm going to do the same thing for spark plug two and see if it's the right gap or not. So this one seems to be the right distance here. So I'm just going to just tap on it just a tiny little bit here and see if that's still the right distance. And yes, so now I got the proper distance between the center and side electrode for this one as well. So the next step now will be to go over on the bike and remove the bodywork, remove the tank. And after that, once the tank has been removed, I'll be able to access the spark plugs. So now you can see that I've removed the bodywork from the bike, uh, just to speed up the process. And now the next step will be to remove the tank. And in order to remove the tank, there are two 10 millimeters bolt in front here that are holding this bracket in place. And there are another two 10 millimeters in the back as well. So we're gonna use a socket with a ratchet and I'll loosen this up here. So if I'm not mistaken, Yamaha is recommending to change the spark plugs every 12 months or every 7,000 miles or every 11,000 kilometers. So in my case, I'm going to replace with a much lower mileage uh, because I'm doing only track days with this bike, but I'm replacing the spark at least once a season, minimum, sometimes two. So loosen this up here and loosen up. I'll remove the second one and when you do this you have to just pull the tank up a bit so that it removes some of the pressure especially when you're trying to remove the last uh, the last bolt there and now what we want to do is to go underneath here and actually before I can do this I'm gonna cut my zip tie here your application will probably be a bit different than mine. In my case here, I got some aftermarket Samco hoses, like the breeder hoses. So I'm just gonna push this up a little bit here and do the same thing with the other one. And now we'll have a bit more flexibility or freedom to move things around a bit. And in my case here, what I do normally is that I have the luxury of having my GPR steering damper and I just pop this up on the back here and it allows me to put my aim underneath and do some, uh, some work underneath here. So the first thing you want to do is to unplug uh, the electrical wire here that goes to the, the pump. And it's a bit tricky to access this because there's not a lot of room. And I just pop it up, pop it up on top here. So it gives me some room to work underneath. And what you want to disconnect is this, uh, this electrical wire here. And on the other side, there is this hose here, this one here that's connected to, uh, the uh, the tank itself so this is what you want to disconnect on the other side as well here so this is uh, this is the uh, how the, the gas gets to uh, the combustion chamber here so you'll have to press or you'll have to pull on this little orange thing here and after that, you can press on both sides in order to, uh, to pull it out. All right, so now what I want to do is to unplug 
this wire here or this little block so in order to unplug this electrical circuit here you need to press on that little tab and just gently pull down and then the wire will come off or the block of wire will come off so now that this is done the next step will be to disconnect the gas line and when you do this you'll need some shop towels here because there's going to be a bit of gas that will drip from uh, from that hose so once you pull that little tab away you have to squeeze on both sides and this is a bit of an exercise here squeeze on both sides and wiggle that hose until it comes out and there's not a room to maneuver there so what I do normally is I just use a flat head screwdriver to help me push on that little tab and I push on one side with my finger the other side with that screwdriver and then I can wiggle it a bit more and once it gets going then I can simply finish with my fingers here we go and didn't need the shop towel after that because I got everything on my hands and now that everything has been disconnected we should be able to simply lift that tank there we go and you don't have to worry nothing's gonna leak when you do this all right so now we have full access to the spark plugs so before I uh, take the spark plugs apart here I just want to show you this this is a fuel line and this is the connector that's connecting to the tank so basically what you have to do is that you have to pull it out like this here and after that you have to press on both sides so this side and this side and then you just push away from that little hose that's connected here on the tank so you have to squeeze really hard and push away and wiggle it slowly and it will eventually come off and the other thing as well is that this is the electrical connector so you can see there's a little tab here you have to press on this tab in order for this to unlock and then once this is pressed you can simply pull down so it's a bit of an exercise but be patient take your time you have to press wiggle and and slowly and gently uh, pull it out and you'll be totally fine okay so now we are ready to remove the sparks before you do so you want to make sure that you clean this area quite well so i've already wiped this with uh with a rag but i also have some compressed air here So what you can do once you're ready to pull this out you can simply lift the side of the ignition coil here and just simply wiggle it up all right and now you just simply pull this out so this is the first coil here and what I'm gonna do here is gonna put this aside here and take my rag and just clean this up a bit more here make sure nothing goes in and I'm also gonna blow a bit of air around this here step will be to take a 16 millimeter socket and gently insert this inside here and we will take this 
it's parked outside of there. So I'm gonna remove the ratchet here so I can have a bit more room to work. And that should not be very, very, very tight here. And you simply unscrew this. And in my case, I don't have a rubber piece uh, at the end here to pull this out. So what you can do is just use a magnet. So this is just a magnet here and the magnet should allow me to just simply pull the spark plug out. And uh, I don't think it's too, too bad overall. The spark plug looks good, but we're still gonna go ahead and replace it. So you'll see here that I have you know, the old spark and the new one. And you'll notice uh, at the top of the, uh, the new one, there is a terminal nut here and not on this one. So what you can do for this one is simply take a pair of pliers, just hold this in place and you can unscrew that little terminal nut and you can discard it after that because that will no longer be needed. So this is what that terminal nut looks like here. So a tiny little thing, but again, no longer needed. So when it comes time to reassemble again, what I like to do is use a long pair of needle pliers and just grab the tip of the spark plug and gently drop it in. Because if you use the magnet, quite often it's hard to pull everything back up. And once this is done, you can take your socket and your extension, gently go down and then start screwing this back in place here. And you, want, you don't want this to be ultra tight. The tightening specs for this uh, spark plug here are 13 Newton meter. So I am not gonna use a, a torque wrench for this. Normally what I do is that once it's finger tight, I'm just gonna take my wrench and do an extra half a turn. And that's gonna be enough to uh, to crush that gasket here on the side. So this little gasket will be crushed between the housing of the spark plug and the engine. And that will, uh, that will be the seal between the two. So again, uh, once it's in there, just do half a turn and it should be good enough. And if you want to have the uh, tightening torque specs, it's 13 Newton meter. So I'm gonna take my wrench here, or my ratchet, I should say and I'm just going to do one half a turn. And then we will reinsert the, uh, the boot or the, uh, the coil back on top of it. Make sure it's centered and you'll hear this clicking sound and then push make sure it's in place properly and that the seal is all around that little metal lip there okay so now i'm on the other side and we're going to do the exact same thing again we're going to remove this coil here So here we go. And we're gonna blow a little bit of air in this one as well. Just to be on the safe side. And we are gonna use the 16 mil socket again with the ratchet mm. 
right, now we're going to use the magnet again. Pull this out. Here we go. And this one. Oh, there's a bit more white at the tip of that electrode here, so I have to figure out what that means. But in the meantime, we're going to take the new one and then remove that nut as well, that terminal nut here. And just uh, use my fingers to remove it. And my gap is still okay. And there's no crack. You just have to make sure as well that before you install a spark plug that there's no crack, everything looks good. And if you have any doubt, just throw it in garbage and get a new one. And I'm gonna use the long nose pliers again. And I'm gonna gently drop this in. Make sure when you do this, you are, you have a very steady end and you don't want to drop this at the bottom there because it's definitely gonna change your gapping. And I'm gonna reuse the socket again to screw this back in place. process again once you have this finger tight here you're just going to do half a turn to seat it in place properly and we're going to reinsert that ignition coil on top again push it in make sure that everything is properly seated and that's it, that's the process to replace your spark plugs. So now, I'm gonna put everything back at its place here, so it's gonna be a bit easier to reassemble everything properly. And there we go. So now, I'm simply gonna bring the tank back on top of this, and we will reconnect the electrical circuit and the gas line. Okay, so as you can see, the tank is back on now. I'm gonna reconnect that gas line on the side, on the right hand side here. Gonna reinsert this hose on that white little tube here. And when you do this, you'll hear that just clip here and then you have to clip the little brown thing or orange thing on top so that it stays there and we are going to do the same thing on the other side here with the electrical wire i'm going to route this properly here make sure that it doesn't get tangled in anything and you also want to make sure that it's oriented the right way as well And you want to hear that little clipping sound as well when you put this back in place. And once everything is ready to go back at the right location, you can lift your tank again and seat it properly at the right location. And just double check that nothing is tangled underneath. And then in my case here, I'm gonna run those two tubes or these two lines here, the breeder lines. Okay, so now we can reassemble the uh, tank. So what I'd like to do normally is start with the two bolts in the front. And just make sure that you line up the holes. It's always a bit difficult to do. You need to be able to push the back and just wiggle it until the holes are centered for the bracket and the body or the frame of the bike. So we've got 
the first one here. And I got the second one right here. I think that should be lined up properly. You just have to move the tank a little bit. Just be patient with it. Push it back and forth until you can thread those bolts with your fingers. And I'm not gonna go super tight right away because I want to attach the one in the back as well. So same thing for the one in the back here. You want to basically lift this up here a little bit until you can line up the holes properly. And you have to lift it up and push it forward. And uh, I'm gonna try to do this with two hands here. The first one is the most difficult one. And uh, once you get the second one, it's a little bit easier. Just make sure again, you don't cross thread that bolt here. All right, so now that everything's in place, I'm gonna take my ratchet and secure everything back to the proper torque. So you can see that the process of changing the spark plugs is not very, very complex. I think it probably takes more time to remove the bodywork than to change the sparks. Uh, but you don't have to do it too often, so it's not too, too bad of an exercise. There we go. So now the front bracket is probably secure in place. Okay, so the tank's secure in place. Uh, everything is properly connected underneath. So now the moment of truth is that we will start the bike. are changed and everything is working okay that was a process to change the spark plugs on my Yamaha R3 so fairly simple process you just have to take your time make sure that you gap your sparks properly remove the adapter nut on the top and uh, that's pretty much it if you have any questions comments or feedback please post them below or reach out to me on social media if that video was helpful, please do me a favor and smash that like button or subscribe to the channel or even better, do both. Until next time, stay safe, ride safe, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.